Hey, it's Rob. Welcome to Horsehead Bookends. It is Friday, so we're going to talk gaming today. So if you saw us to the unboxing videos that I posted earlier this week, um, I got two Kickstarters in. So today we are going to play Freshwater Fly. It is a one to four player dice drafting game uh, made by Brian Sewer. Sure. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he did make Cold Water Crown, which is an excellent game. Again, about fishing, um, but that's more of a worker placement. This is Dice Drafting, produced by Bellwether Games. Um, really looking forward to playing this. It, uh, it looks super interesting. I am not a big fan of fishing games. Let's head over to the table and check it out and uh, play a few rounds, and then we'll, uh, I'll come back and let you know what I thought. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to play, because there are tons of videos out there that I'll show you how to play that can teach you much better than I can. I'm just going to play a few rounds and uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it when, when I'm done. So let's head over. Okay, so I have Fresh Water Fly set up for a two-player game. I will be playing both um, players just so I get an idea of how to play, what all the symbols mean, and things like that, because that makes it easy for me to uh, to teach other people. So I find this the easiest way to kind of learn a game. So we're going to dive right in and uh, get started. Oh, I think in the unboxing, um, I said this is a first player token. It is not a first player token. It is your actual casting token um, that you place on the fish when you try to catch it. Uh, this is the Kickstarter edition. The regular edition just is, looks like a big piece of wood. They both serve the purpose. Maybe I'll make this a first player marker or something. Or I'll figure it out. The object of Freshwater Fly is to catch seven fish. When you catch seven fish, the game's over, you tally your score. Now, there are individual scores that you get when you catch fish. For this one, for every set of three, you get three points. The first one to seven fish gets two points. And then whoever has caught the most coho gets six points. Now, aside from that, on your player board, you have individual goals as well. Now, because I have stuff on my board, I'm not going to pick them up to show you, but I do have a board right here that I'm not using where it shows you what your individual goals would be. So for this, every two um, uh, hatch tokens that you get that aren't similar, you get three points. For every rainbow and brook, you get three. For every cutthroat and grayling, you get three. And for every dollar and still head, you get four. So that's... Um, it gives you some uh, uh, variety. So not only do you need to get the, the main goals, you also can work on getting individual goals to increase your score as well. The first player's done. Uh, it's time for the second player to go. So I'm, I'll walk through a quick step. What you need to do, because it's a dice drafting game, you have your dice pool up here. All different numbers, they've been rolled already. Since I do not have a fish on my line, the first thing I want to do is try to catch a fish. So, I want to pick a number that corresponds to a column. However, because I have a green lure out, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but I have a green lure. I want to try to land in a column that has these green hatch tokens because it gives me a better chance of landing the fish. So for example, here on column 5, we're going to try to catch uh, a fish in column 5. So I would take the 5 die and then I would say which fish I'm trying to catch. So. We're going to go for this brook right here. I shuffle up the strike cards. Well, the player sitting next to you would shuffle up the strike cards. Now, since there is one, I have the same matching color as my lure, I get one strike card to try to catch this fish here. So we're going to see if that works. Reveal, and we caught it. First, first, first try. So I take the hatch token, I slot it into my reel, 
I take the fish, I flip it over to the other side to show me the real um, strength, I think it's called, uh, is a two. And I would put it on top of my board with the magic symbol. That's it. Also, because since I was next to the rocks, I also get a card, which will give me uh, extra abilities throughout the game. So if I pay two finesse, I can do one of these two actions. Now I refill the fish. And that is the end of this player's turn. Now, back to uh, the first player, and we'll see what he's gonna do. Okay, so now for part two, uh, after we got the fish on the hook, now we're gonna try to reel the fish in. Now, it's the same principle. We draft a die, and that the die number equals how many times around we reel it in. However, depending on the strength of the fish, which this brook right here is a two, it's the number of the die minus two is how many times we're gonna roll it around. And once we get it all the way back up to the top, the fish moves down one position and we get closer to catching it. You know what, I think we're gonna try for the biggest number. I mean, we can get different bonuses on that. What else do we got? We got two minus two, that'll do nothing. So let's take the six die. And so it'd be six minus two is four. One, two, three, four. Nothing happens. If, I had, if it was a plus, I would move the real one more. If it was a diamond, I'd move the real one back and then get that. Um, uh, ability, but I don't because it's this weird looking symbol. So it just stays there, and now my turn is over. And back to the first player who reeled in a fish already, and now they're gonna cast again. Now, another thing you can do if you can't, if you don't want to uh, try to reel it in or you don't want to cast, you can take a die and you increase your finesse by two, which is nice because the finesse gives you some extra bonuses that you can use uh, for your turn. Okay, so all the dice have been used, so now what we do is we sum up the value of the dice, and whoever has the higher number is the new starting player. Also, what happens is, at the start of the new round, we move these tokens down. So, these hatch tokens get discarded, and everything moves down one. And this goes here and gets new hatch tokens on it. Alright, they're going to take a number five because they're still reeling in their fish. So it's five minus two. So it's three. So it's one, which moves it down to the next block. Two, three. Now this allows me to take one of these tiles up here, which will give me a bonus. So 
I think I am going to take this one. Now this bonus allows me to swap out my lore, and it, or I can automatically cast to the six. Not too bad. Alright, so that was, I think we paid about three rounds of Freshwater Fly. So, I'm gonna pause for now and uh, let's go back to the office and talk about it. Alright, so that was uh, Freshwater Fly by Bellwether Games. Uh, it is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I am, uh, I, I like dice drafting games in general, especially, well, Too Many Bones is your dice drafting uh, RPG and uh, Twa, which is I absolutely love. It's a great game. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. Um, but this is really fun. Rules are super easy to understand. Um, the gameplay is very fast. Uh, this was at two players, so probably at four it'll take a little longer. And I feel that if you make an error, you're not automatically out of the running to, to win the game. Uh, one thing I do like is that the momentum tokens that you take is once you use them, you flip them to the other side, which have different powers, and they go back on the board, so they're up for grabs. It makes the game very interesting. One thing I really do like about this and Cold Water Crown, it has a solo mode, and I love solo mode in games. Sometimes you can't get your, uh, your gaming group together, you can't get friends over to play, and you want to play it and you want some sort of entertainment that's not watching TV or playing a video game. You want that tactile experience for a board game. And I think the solo mode is great and I applaud any developer who adds a solo mode into the game if possible. The solo, what's nice about the solo mode for this, you go through seasons and you have certain objectives that you have to do. Like you have to catch so many fish and everything. And I'll show you, they actually have a, uh, this is in the book. And it's like a checklist of, of things you have to do and how you set up the board because you have to set up the rocks in different ways, which is super interesting. Um, they gave you, they give you one, I think they give you three of them. There's one in the middle of the book after they explain the solo ru rules and there's two at the end. So I definitely want to print these out, laminate them, use a, a dry erase board for them because I, I kind of have a feeling I'm going to be playing this game a lot. Quick setup, quick tear down. I think I played through four rounds and it was very enjoyable. Uh, I didn't feel that I was really racking my brain trying to play the game. So that's uh, Freshwater Fly Bellwether Games. Loved it. Uh, can't wait to play it some more. It's going to have a uh, definitely a permanent space in my collection. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please don't forget to click on subscribe and get notified whenever I upload some new videos. Any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll answer you as soon as I can. Otherwise, talk to you later.